love how we switch it up every now and then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got Full Circle right, right now. Well, welcome back to Sister Circle Live. It is time now for a Full Circle. This is when we like to spend a little time talking about something that we think is pretty good, and then yeah. hopefully it will be meaningful to you. Well, here's the story. Ohio State University conducted a study where they gave 506 black youth smartphones, mm -hmm. tracked their locations, and asked them to rate how safe they felt in various neighborhoods. What they found is that black boys are more feel fearful while traveling through white neighborhoods. Ooh. These findings, of course, are not a surprise. With so many recent headlines of blacks being racially profiled, police being called unnecessarily, and unarmed citizens being tased or shot. But as parents, aunts, uncles, and community leaders, what can we do to give our children a greater sense of security as they navigate through life? And uh, Trina, you have two grown sons. I do. Um, I do. What were the conversations, or what have the conversations been like recently for you and your sons? And if you can go back to, you know, how you raised them to, to, to feel comfortable in every situation. Or I, not. I, I think right now um, our, our young African-American youth, they're, they're becoming more self-aware. Mm -hmm. And uh, with me having two young men, it gives me time and opportunity to talk to them, but not just as a mother, to talk to them as peers. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the racial climate is changing. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, it just, the, even the political climate is changing. Yes. And they even, they even get to talk to their peers now on a completely different level than they're accustomed to. Now everything is not about, hey, I just have the new Nikes now. Mm -hmm. Now it's about, okay, now I need to be more aware of what's going on. Hey, bro, let's walk together mm -hmm. when we're going to the store. Hey, I'm not going to dress a certain, it's unfortunate, but I'm not going to dress a certain way. I'm not going to look a certain way anymore. We can't walk and, and address ourselves the way we are accustomed to mm -hmm. because of this recent racial mm -hmm. and political climate yeah, that's going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you find these uh, these statistics that were presented by this Ohio State study to be, uh, and what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Do you feel like they're surprising? I mean, some kids are, are scared to be in, uh, in white neighborhoods. Based on current events, I'm not surprised. Okay, yeah, yeah. Not, not in the least bit. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. So what do you think that we can do, uh, you know, to uh, allow our children and our black boys to, to feel safer in areas where they feel like they're unwanted? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, uh, again, uh, just knowing how to try your very best to be appropriate. Mm. Uh, I mean, to try your very best, and I say your very best because sometimes we are, they're still appropriate and, and things are still happening to them. Uh, I like what Trina said when she said, you know, let's go together in twos, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and even when you are addressing other people, try to be respectful. Yeah. Just as respectful as you can be, you know, um, and be very direct, assertive, mm -hmm. but still be kind. Yeah, 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 yeah I think, um, for me, uh, even having black daughters, uh, obviously, I believe exposure mm -hmm. um, really breaks down fear when it comes to uh, being in certain neighborhoods or being in certain areas that uh, you <coughs> may feel uncomfortable in. And exposure doesn't mean money. I think a lot of times growing up, we feel like, well, my kids weren't exposed to this because we didn't have the proper money to be able yeah. to send them to, to certain things. And, but there are so many opportunities, so many free opportunities in the city. And prior to the show, I just Googled free events for teens, free events for children in and around Atlanta. Mm -hmm. A plethora of things came up. Mm -hmm. All you need is a MARTA, or you can get somebody to catch a rat. The High Museum mm -hmm. has uh, free events every single Sunday. And shout out to uh, Michael Render, also known as Killer Mike, who is now on the board of the High Museum. Yeah. So he's Wonderful. trying to expose more minority, more children in general to art and all of that. So there's so many different things that we can do. But I think um, when I... Go ahead. So tell me, through exposure, how is that connected with safety? Because I believe that when uh, children are in different areas mm -hmm. or exposed to different things or are in company that they generally are not uh, used to being around. Mm -hmm. When you start surrounding them and diversifying mm -hmm. their company, diversifying mm -hmm. their area, yeah. then they under uh, diversifying where they go and what they eat and all that kind of stuff. Yes, it, it just gives them an opportunity to feel comfortable in any opera, in every, yes. in any space. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying exposure to different things, not just things that are in your community. Step mm -hmm. outside of your community. Yeah. You know, um, don't buy certain things and say, you know, let's let's allocate this money to go out to a. A, a different type of restaurant. Mm -hmm. Let's go to a, a, a Thai restaurant or an Indian restaurant. Just exposure to different things so when you get in those areas, there's no longer a fear. I agree with that. And you don't feel like you are, um, what's the word? 
you're less than mm. or other when oh. you're in those areas. So diversifying your palate when it comes yeah. not only to food, but just, just culture in general. And, and I also think that that helps the other parties too, Absolutely. to become more acclimated to African American, the African American culture and being around African American people. people in general, yeah. in general. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had to learn even early on in my career, remember Ryan Cameron took us out, because we didn't grow up, I didn't go out growing up going out to a fine dining. Yeah, I didn't. Yes. We Red Lobster on Candler Road, that was our fine dining. <laughs> I'm going to Red Lobster tonight. And I still take my family to Red Lobster. I love it. I love the biscuits. And the salmon. Right? And, and the steamed broccoli. I get it every time. You love the restaurant. Well, I, do, I, do, I do. I do. I do. I do. I just want to keep it real. But Ryan took us to Ruth Chris. I remember he took us there uh, mm, as a yum. radio, right, as a uh, radio um, team. And the first thing he said was, act like you've been there. Yeah. And that was one of the pieces of advice I've never forgotten in my career because sometimes we'll get into situations like, oh my God, this is so amazing! Yes, and then yes. it's like, you've never been there. Mm. So we just have to make sure that we're exposing and not that we're trying to be other because mm -hmm. I don't want to get this mm -hmm. misconstrued mm -hmm. on social media. Not that we're trying to be other, but exposure is free. Exposure. Definitely. Take your children Definitely. outside of their normal circumstances and expose them to different things. And even, even if they're not your children, mm -hmm. yes. you know, That's expose good. yourself to maybe someone else's child because yeah. maybe mm -hmm. you can become a counselor to them yeah. yes. and sometimes maybe your children feel like they can't talk to you mm -hmm. because you never know how burdensome mm -hmm. this experience could and may be for them yeah. and it could leave a lasting impression yes. on them and their peers yes yeah. so absolutely. it's important for them to have someone to talk to absolutely yeah. well send us your thoughts on our daily not daily feed on our, our um, full circle on all of our social media platforms uh